you know, I expected like a, a nice, cool guy. I heard he's real friendly, but um, yeah, he's got a lot of a lot of wisdom, and he seems to be, uh, you know, like you said, he's he's at a fragile place right now with a lot of change in his life, but um, oh, it seems like that might be playing in his favor. He uh, he seems very kind of in touch with himself and with his surroundings, so. Um, yeah, man, really good dude. Yeah. Real friendly guy. How did it feel playing with him? That was ridiculous. Like, you know, coming from listening to his band when I was literally like eight years old, um, when I was getting into skateboarding and then to rock out with him, like, pretty nuts. You know, I, uh, I'm not into the whole starstruck thing, and I know he's not like a star, but um, that was a pretty fucking surreal experience, definitely. Yeah, I've uh, watched him in just in amazement and yeah. just... Um, you know, he started playing when he was 18 months old. Yeah. With, wow. You know, with my pots and pans, and I'd put them in the That's cabinet, it, yeah. and he'd take them out. And one of my friends was there one day, and she said, listen, he's playing a tune. And so we listened, and then shortly after that, he got his first drum set, and then another one. When he was six, he played with a jazz band uh, at Boots and Bonnets in yeah, Chester. Yeah. Yeah, yeah played with, adult, with an adult uh, jazz band. So, kind of like Kieran is playing with older guys. Sure. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's a legacy. This room is basically where I existed as just me, you know, and I remember laying the first McRad record, looking out this window. But yeah, this is where I existed the whole thing. Like I used to come to this room and dream, like yeah. completely dream. Like it's wild. Like it's crazy. yeah, yeah. Man. So it's for real. It's like this is like I mean you're in it. Like this is what yeah. created is that, that sound. Man. Like you know, this is where I created it, and right. I literally created it from a bass and a cassette player, and, and a couple of pair of pants and some sneaks in my skateboard. And that's it's crazy for me because like I, I was thinking this when you were saying downstairs how you're writing weakness down in that other room yeah. that there I was as a young kid listening to that and growing up on that and skateboarding right. many years ago you know eight and now I'm 32 right. and now here I am like where that was being created yeah, like, right. you know and you were a kid at that time creating it mm -hmm. weird you know I was here when I got the call to go uh, play drums for Bad Brains. Like I just came off of a tour with this, a group Urge Overkill. And you know, I'm sitting here just kind of like, oh, hanging out and Daryl calls me. He's like, what are you doing? Uh, can you go to Japan in like basically two weeks? And so I was like, uh, yeah. You know what I mean? so, <laughs> yeah, so how I'm, surreal was that for you? It was I, crazy. You were a fan of Bad Brains, Yeah, obviously. big time fan. And you know, I had to learn basically two and a half hours worth of music and basically seven rehearsals. What did you do with Pearl Jam? Exactly? Um, I, when I was out on tour with um, Urge Overkill, we were on tour with Pearl Jam, the last tour that I did with Urge, and there was a show in New Orleans where we actually had a chance to do a Green River tri tribute. Green River was um, a, a band that I think Mark from Mud Honey was in, yeah. uh, a couple guys from Pearl Jam, and so we actually did two or three songs, and then I got a chance to play drums live, and at that point, and still now, Pearl Jam records every one of their shows. Yeah. So they decided to do this uh, double 45 to release their fan base, and then they put one of the songs on it that I played, you know, live and stuff like that. And I got a chance to hang out with Stone and, you know, went to his house and spent some time and recorded in a studio with the yeah. Brendan O'Brien and a bunch of his friends. And, you know, so it was really good because those guys are really on top of their game because they're all skaters and punkers too. Yeah. They were just really successful with Pearl Jam, but they right. they all, I mean, everyone says they are Nirvana, this and that, but it's like Pearl Jam was just as hardcore, Absolutely. just as punk as far as their aspect. They just had, you know, Eddie Vedder too guide that ship and that's like a powerful you know vocal presence I and mean, you're not going to get past that guy you know, from bad brains to underdog to writing a baseline with billy joel and then sting and amy grant like right. can you tell me a little bit about the billy joel sting and amy grant what happened with that yeah the, the, the billy joel situation was for river of dreams he wanted to do a remix of it and the studio that i was working for studio for joe and phil nicolo um, Butcher Brothers, they were, you know, pretty much crushing the remix market at that time. You know, everybody was coming to them, crisscross, all these different people. And so we get this call, oh, Billy Joel's doing this thing and we have to do this because he's in this situation. So here's this track and they worked up the track and they were like, here, we need you to play bass on it. So I, 25 minutes into it, 
I'm done, and then the next month, it's, I'm on British Airways, and it's playing on the plane. But then Amy Grant was also through Studio Four and the Butcher Brothers, because they, once again, they were doing the remix thing, and that song was House of Love. And then Sting had a song called When We Dance, and that was like my favorite remix, because the, Phil Niccolo basically had to call Sting and approve, get the bass line approved from, from Sting. That was like the whole time thinking like, wow, Sting actually has to approve what I'm doing. And I, police, that's, between the police clash and the Sex Pistols, and Bad Brains also, but police clash, Sex Pistols, those are like my favorite staples of music. But the police to me, because they've embraced punk rock and reggae and pop and rock and Sting is a great, yeah. Source of energy. I mean, Stuart Copeland's always my favorite drummer, and Andy Summers. Yeah, yeah. But Sting, to me, was like the guy who, if there was anybody I would say if I would have had to be somebody, even now, I would definitely choose Sting's role in music because he yeah. really set the tone for me as a young person to get out of like the rush phase that all my friends were in in Delaware, yeah. and and then give me more of a sense of like separating myself from my friends that were just strictly in the punk and that just wanted to listen to the crass hardcore stuff that was going on the police gave me a sense of melody and it was still edgy and I don't think there's been another group like that still so the earliest memories I have in, in child, of childhood is watching my brother play drums cool. and I say I say this and I really believe it Chuck is the best musician on earth I mean I mean I have to I have to say that I mean you, you've got your your great musicians and but Chuck can play just as good as any of them everywhere I go and every person I met that knew him, that knows him, speak highly of him. Yeah, and stuff like that. Highly of his talent, highly of his personality. He's a beautiful dude. No really, he is a beautiful dude. It really makes me proud. It, 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 it really does. You up, it right? really makes yeah. no, it don't make me cry. <laughs> but it really makes me proud and stuff like that. I mean he he is a phenomenal talent. You know what I mean? And stuff like that. And uh, what can I say? We're gonna say I told him everything you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, makes me feel very proud of him. Yeah. I think what best describes Chuck and how I feel about him was an article. It was called uh, they call him the Renaissance Man, and so that kind of uh, depicts who he is. And uh, so just proud of of his accomplishments. What did I dream about? I dream about making my mother extremely happy. You know, as a person. Uh, she's done a lot for me and also my father, but my mother definitely. I want to make her happy, you know, with my music and with my skating.